Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending July the 2nd, 2021. Well, another bullish week in the, in the, in the uh, large caps. Uh, inflation's ticking down, S&P 500 ticking up at the expense of small and mid caps, growth ticking up at the expense of value and high dividends. Uh, momentum trend is continuing as value returns on a on an uptick this week uh, a, a, a little faster than than momentum and the trends now are still as last week sp 500 strong uptrend nasdaq strong uptrend the mid caps and small caps uh, are remain remain flat other two large indexes are are getting to the point of overbought s p 500 uh finishing the week that way uh, right at right up at overbought nasdaq has uh been flirting with it uh, since uh, midweek. So that's good news on the market fronts. This week, I thought we would uh, follow through on our promise of, of delivering solutions to the long-term care topic that we've been uh, speaking of for the past couple of weeks here. So let's, let's get into that then. Okay, the long-term care solution discussion uh, is going to cover uh, long-term care insurance, family care, Medicare, and health insurance. Medicaid, and then we'll end up with some hybrid solutions. So let's start with long-term care insurance. That has since, for the last 10 to 15 years, has become uh, a, a non uh, sequitur because it's it's too expensive. You either you use it or lose it. There's only a limited number of carriers out there, and the solutions uh, are just unattractive. Uh, you, you can't qualify for it. Uh, nine nine point nine times out of ten, generally. Okay, because they're looking at, at morbidity, not mortality, and, and, and we'll get into that as we close the discussion in hybrid solutions, but the morbidity risk precludes most people from getting into the long-term care insurance uh, aspect, and, and many companies uh, aren't, aren't even there uh, to deal with anyway. Family care is, is no solution because it's too expensive in terms of social cost. It's number one, very selfish of, uh, of anyone to expect family to take care of them in a long-term care situation. I know tradition has it that you know family takes care of family, uh, but let's let's all be be adults here. It's selfish because most families aren't qualified. The ones that are qualified don't have the ability to. Uh, sacrifice huge chunks of their own life and financial resources. We talked about those those statistics last week. A lot of people are spending over $10,500 a year out of their own pocket to take care of someone else's uh, health care, long-term care expenses. It's not fair. So it ruins lives. And, uh, you know, ultimately you might have a chance to, to, to have extended uh, uh, time, an additional time with somebody. It might, it might enhance the relationship to an extent, but in the long term, it ends up ruin, ruining relationships because uh, at some point, decisions have to be made. It becomes very uncomfortable. Uh, th there's no way to stretch out the fairness of the situation, and, and it ends up ruining, ruining family relationships. It just does. If you want an entire discussion on this topic, I, I, I re reference my book, Pack a Sweater. I talked about it last week. You can reach out to me if you don't have a copy, you'd like a copy, info at assetguidancegroup.com. be glad to provide you a copy of the unabridged version. The abridged version will be coming out later this year if everything falls into place for me uh, because we'd like to update it. Uh, and, and, and speaking of, of, of Pack a Sweater, what I... Uh, ended the uh, unabridged version with was the Medi Medicaid solution. So let's transition into Medicaid by first taking a brief stop on the island of Medicare and health insurance. Just realize that Medicare is not going to pay past 100 days. After day 80, 90, uh, you're, you're, you're moving towards on your own if, if the uh, institutionalized person is to remain in long-term care. So you've got to start setting aside your own resources and paying for that uh, from a, a bucket of, of, of money uh, that you either have or, or don't have. If you don't have it, then Medicaid becomes your, your last, uh, you know, solution of last resort. If you don't have any assets, uh, uh, 
then spin down is not a problem for you. If you do have, let's let's transition into Medicaid planning, uh, just for uh, you know quickly here. If you do have assets, Medicaid becomes a suboptimal solution in my analysis for a variety of reasons. In certain circumstances, my parents just happen to be in a in a small uh, county in West Texas where they had a brand new facility and 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 you know the type of care to be received was pretty much going to be the same whether it was Medicaid or private paid all right uh, not everybody is that fortunate uh, to be at that type of an area in in, in greater metro Atlanta uh, you don't have that that type of availability to you uh, in my uh, experience okay and you also lose control over uh, various aspects of the process because you're constantly having to go through because the state's in control of it uh, it's a partnership but at some level the state is controlling a case manager is controlling uh, many aspects of the um, of the housing and, and and the care as you go as you go forward because of the Medicaid uh, reimbursement now let's talk about gaming the system I, I, I spent a, uh, a number of, of, of years teaching this to, uh, in the legal aspect, to uh, lawyers and financial advisors. I did that with Nash, through National Business Institute. And as you can see, these are, are a stack of day-long uh, continuing legal education courses that we taught, uh, that, that, that I taught, had a major role in most of these. These were four to six hour, three to six hour programs. They were all day uh, programs, very expensive to a national audience of, uh, of lawyers and, uh, and elder law practitioners. I, I spent uh, several years on the litigation committee of the National Association of Elder Law Attorneys, NALA. And, uh, I uh, just uh, backed away from that recently because uh, I, I do this now uh, primarily. So when I talk about gaming the system, I, I, I took a step back from, from teaching that because, uh, you know, I also taught uh, ethics and, and that are involved in, in that arena. But look, the, the problem is, is that and now a lot of financial advisors aren't straight up with people uh, or it, it, it's not intentionally, I don't think, it's, it's through a misunderstanding about bankrupting yourself in order to qualify for Medicaid or, or be, impoverishing yourself to qualify for Medicaid. In a, in a technical sense, maybe in a practical sense, I suppose that, that, that you know, is accurate. But what really the thing is, is that you're thinking, wow, I've got an IRA, I've got a 401k out there, and it's, um, you know, I, I, have to, I have to lose control of that, I have to get rid of all that in order to qualify for Medicaid. That's not so. That's not so, and, 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 and what you have to do, and, and in Georgia, it's considered as, a, as a, an income stream, okay? So either, either it is an in, you use it as an income stream or you, in terms of uh, required minimum distributions, or you convert it into income streams, uh, and then you're paying, uh, the, you're sharing the cost, the pay-down cost of your, of your care with Medicaid as time goes by through the use of a Miller Trust, but that's onerous, okay? And uh, you're ignoring the needs of the non-institutionalized spouse uh, in the case of, uh, of a marriage. In a single situation, it's much cleaner. In the case of an institutionalized spouse, it's less attractive because you're really, really paring down the total lifestyle uh, that a person uh, could have, even though they're they're well, okay, at the expense of the institutionalized spouse. Uh, this this was a a, a big uh, aspect of the planning that we do in Medicaid planning. So uh, that that I found the hybrid solutions far superior ultimately than getting into those gaming situations. Um, uh, that are that are legal solutions, okay? And most lawyers, I think, I think the good ones that are in this area, bro, they're going to charge around fifteen thousand dollars, somewhere between seventy five hundred to fifteen thousand dollars to do in a crisis situation. So they make a good living doing it, but it's the control that the family gives up in order to implement these solutions and um, 
and you know it's it's just i don't like the idea of being essentially uh, loosely stated very crudely stated on the county dime uh, if you have the ability to do so and you're healthy now if, if you're healthy enough to engage in this type of planning ahead of time medicaid has to be engaged in this type of planning in order to to not give up half roughly of your assets in order to in order to do this type of planning you have to have planned 60 months in advance well if you're healthy enough five years in advance why not do a more appropriate thing and carve out a chunk of your assets and 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 take the five years to grow that piece of assets up to around the 450,000 to half a million dollars it's going to require in order to uh, in order to pay those kind of uh, long-term care costs down the road over a period of average of three to four years so say three and a half years on the on the average so how do we do that well the hybrid solutions you uh, are, are fall into a couple of different categories okay let's talk about just those that have enough resources here to carve out a piece of of their assets and then grow it at a reasonable rate of return commensurate with their risk tolerance into the required four hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars that they're going to need let's say in 10 years okay and we can we can do that anywhere from five to ten years it's case specific but that's the ideal portion and then you've got that bucket set aside to pay for the cost of care for the person that's in need of long-term care that's one solution to it okay and that's that's uh that, that's well enough done and and easy enough uh well I, easy is not a good word to use but uh, uh elegant enough uh, to to implement okay the another aspect is using leverage through uh through risk shifting okay that's and that's really what we're talking about all along the line here is risk management the risk management that 70 percent of people everyone over age 65 is going to need long-term care at some point so if seven out of ten of us are going to need that we're talking about either shifting risk to our other family members and putting the burden on them shifting risk to the community the society at large in the form of medicaid and putting the and putting the burden on the taxpayers generally to fund medicaid or shifting risk over into some type of other carrier that can take a hybrid solution in this case uh, life insurance uh, planning in the form of a flexible death benefit a death benefit that can be accelerated and used as a living benefit paid out over like say 48 months four years uh, instead of to a beneficiary at the end of life in the form of a death benefit used as a living benefit to an institutionalized person and that money is then available to them accelerated and you're using it as leverage dollars in the form of um, of, uh, of that life insurance policy if the policy grows long enough you have the option of growing using the cash value because these are all fixed index products you have no risk of downside loss because of the magic of indexing uh, but you have market-like returns so it's going to outperform the bond markets and yet you don't have to take this inordinate amount of risk to get it uh, to get the type of returns that you need in order to create the kind of cash that would be available so then if you have if you're fortunate enough to have a, a long enough lo longevity in the policy and in your your well-being then you can choose whether or not to take the cash value in the form of loans tax-free loans or the death benefit in the form of tax-free uh, accelerated living benefits living needs benefits to finance health care uh, a long-term care solutions in that aspect now another form of it is uh, through a, a, the use of accelerated benefits in a fixed indexed annuity and what those do is they double up the payments so if you trigger the the benefit you either get the uh, the, the the value uh, uh, that's available to you or the uh, double up and, and 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 trigger the income rider and it pays double the payment for until it until the accumulation value is exhausted uh or uh, or earlier termination of your life and so 
those are two very, uh, very useful uh, uh, forms of leverage. Using leverage, it's, it's a form of other people's money uh, through by sh risk shifting into those insurance type of products. The first one that I mentioned was uh, setting aside a chunk of your portfolio if you if you happen to have enough resources available, and we just grow it in that fashion. We have to be very careful because in that fashion, though, if we're in the markets, we really have to manage downside risk. That's another discussion in terms of our investment philosophy generally, whether it's for that type of uh, of, of an account or general uh, investing. Uh, the por the point of the hybrid solutions here. And the, and the best way, especially for people that are risk averse, and the leverage solutions, the hybrid solutions, is you don't have to worry about, okay, you've carved this money out, you've set it aside in there, it's, it's growing cash value and it's waiting, or income value coming back to you. It's, you're not, it's not a use it or lose it situation. You're either going to enjoy the benefits of your money by being able to pull it out and use it for it's long-term care uh, 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 payments uh, to, to pay those expenses, the payment of long-term care expenses, or it's going to be paid out to your beneficiaries that you've designated, generally your children, uh, or some charitable uh, uh, institution in the form of, of the death benefit. So much more elegant solution, much, much more robust, much less hassle for everybody involved as opposed to creating a Miller Trust and then having to deal with that at monthly accounting. And with Medicaid, you have to re-qualify every year. It sounds good going up front, it's a hassle in the long term, and the loss of control um, is why I shifted over and started speaking to uh, the hybrid solutions as a more elegant, uh, preferable solution to the long-term care problem. All right. That'll wrap it up for this week. Hope everyone has a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Look forward to helping you and your family. Remember to like and subscribe, share the information, and I'll see you next time.